Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been three months since <laughs> since I last posted. Um, it's been three months since I got my surgery with Dr. Medina. I got my surgery done March the 2nd and it is now June 26th, I think it is. I don't know. The days all run together because of COVID. So this video is basically, as you can see by the title, my surgery day video. It's gonna be pretty short because um, I wasn't able to record. My mom tried to record, but y'all know how that goes, so. I was the first one to have surgery. I requested that because I didn't want to be in the room, you know, having anxiety and everything else. So in the last video, you saw that I took my shower, did all that good stuff. And then that I think they woke me up at like four o'clock. They woke me up at like four o'clock and um, that's when uh, Dr. Medina did come in, I think it was like five, and she did like a, a history and physical on me. She talked to me, um, all that good stuff. Mommy, yes? Can you do my makeup? Okay, you can do your makeup. That's when they gave me the blue pill. They wheeled me back toward the, uh, the, opera the operating room. So I will go ahead and um, Mommy, let you all see the raw footage of my surgery day. The breathing treatment opens up your lungs so that you don't have any difficulty with the surgery. Um, surgery can put a lot of strain on your lungs, which is why I had a uh, pulmonary function test. If you fail that, then you can't have your surgery. So um, it's just basically a preventative measure for them to give people that have asthma a breathing treatment just to make sure that you know nothing goes wrong with with your breathing another reason i think they gave me the breathing treatment is because i got a tummy tuck and basically they're sewing your muscles that are separated they're sewing them back together so that's like having on a corset and your ass can't breathe so the last thing they want is for an asthmatic not to be able to breathe <laughs> people that had yeah, the surgery that are not asthmatic have said that they have had difficulty breathing because they sew the muscles so tight like yeah so that's another reason why she I think gave me a breathing treatment now what you see there is a glucometer it measures your blood sugar so apparently when I got my blood work done they said my glucose which is your sugar like folks say, it's your sugar, diabetes. My sugar was elevated, so they wanted to repeat it before the surgery, so that's what they're doing. So as you can see, my level was 100, and that was within the normal range for me to have the surgery. So we went ahead and proceeded. Don't forget to use your water. Don't use the water in the sink. You use bottled water to brush your teeth. It's a great idea to get a pill box because when you're in pain, you delirious, all that stuff, you're not gonna know what to take, when to take it, especially in the hospital. Pills that I did take were my iron pills, turmeric and bromelain pills that helps with the inflammation. I took some probiotics, I took folic acid that helps with the, uh, the absorption of iron. Uh, what else did I take? B12 that also helps with the absorption of iron. And I think that is, all of the supplements that I took on my own, yeah, yeah. Hold on, now do it again. Do you see what I mean? My mama couldn't get it right. She done missed the whole opportunity to get Dr. Medina in the camera 
Cause she had had the camera turned this way. And I'm like, no, mine got turned the other way. And then Medina was piecing and then my mom didn't get it. So this is when I take the infamous blue pill. Bye. Bye. See you later. Let me um, turn on the light. Okay. Like now is not the way that you're gonna look. Okay. okay? You're real swollen. Sí, prendeme la porfa. Gracias. Mira, ya quedó muy linda. De verdad, muy linda. Ella le hacen falta tres cremas más. Yo lo voy a otra vez para que tú la mezcla con el árnica. Y ya tú sabes cómo ponérsela. Sobame bien esa paciente. Para que mañana no me amanezca morada. Y ella está preciosa. You look so, so nice. I'm not touching the incision. I'm just pulling the tape out. I'm just checking that everything is okay. Take a breath. Real good. You ready, chicken? Yes. Let me find the creams and she's gonna put it up. Let me put it in. Just a light bulb? Yes. Okay. Both sides. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so yesterday when they took my blood work, my hypocondria was 12.1. Um, remember I said your hemoglobin has to be 12 to 16, so I just made it. Um, my doctor was comfortable with doing all the procedures that I needed to get done. Um, so. Um, the nurse came in here. She actually hung a iron infusion for me. Let's see. It's dark. That's been running for about an hour. And then another nurse came in. She drew my blood um, to see what my hemoglobin levels are like. Just in case I need a blood transfusion. So I'll let you all know what happens. Um, so I was first today. The um, coordinator told me that if there were any diabetic patients, then I could go first. So Dr. Medina came in at six o'clock in the morning um, and talked to me. She took my pictures. She also let me know because my diastasis recti is very, very wide. Um, my stomach will not probably be completely flat, um, even though she shows up so that the muscles, um, it's still not gonna be completely flat. Um, but she did say that I could work out and help shrink that. Um, visceral fat okay so i just talked about visceral fat dr medina said that my stomach would not be completely fat flat <laughs> uh, because i have visceral fat you cannot liposuction visceral fat that is the fat that's inside around your organs when they liposuction they take the subcutaneous fat that's the only fat that they can get they can't get all the fat that's in between your organs so i did gain 15 pounds <laughs> um, for the surgery just so that I would have enough fat and because of that um, the fat around my organs increased so she said that I could lose weight to decrease that visceral fat but will my fat transfer also go away like it's it's a slippery slope between you know Losing the weight so my stomach can be flat, but lose the weight and then my fat transfer also go away. It's like Russian roulette. She also said I didn't have a lot of fat <laughs> um, for uh, fat transfer, so those results are not going to be what I want them to be. Um, 
which is fine. And she also said I'm gonna lose about 30% of that fat transfer. Um, she gave me the blue pill, whatever that is. And um, she said I would be wheel back to talk to the anesthesiologist for about 10 minutes, no, for about an hour. So they brought me back into the OR. Um, I laid down on the table. Um, 10 minutes later, I was being transferred into, back into this bed. So I was completely out. I didn't wake up at all, thank God. Um, so that went well. Uh, but I was nauseous, so they bought me some food to eat. I couldn't really drink it. I drank the soup that was for breakfast and then for lunch. They bought in um, ham and cheese and some more soup. I tried to drink it. I couldn't really drink it. Um, usually after my C-sections, I am vomiting like uncontrollably. But this time I didn't vomit, vomit. I was just a little, a little nauseous and I didn't want to eat. And the only thing that I remember that was different um, was that I took the recovery aid, this thingy, um, the night before. It was the last thing that I drank. So I think that had a big um, impact on that. Um, and I'm also drinking one now. Um, when I started drinking that, my nauseousness um, came down a bit too. So, um, right now I'm just chilling in the bed and uh, waiting for my lab results to come back. She said it takes about 10 minutes. Hopefully I won't need a blood transfusion. God willing, and the creek don't rise, I won't need a blood transfusion. Um, my lovely nurse also did my first massage for me. I only bought the Annika gel with me, the Arnica gel with me. Um, so she put some other creams. What are, what are the other creams you put on me? Okay. All together. Okay. So yeah. Um, it wasn't too painful. She was gentle. Uh, but I did feel better after uh, after the massages. So because I'm a nurse and um, I used to work in labor and delivery, I am familiar with post op care, post operative care. And one of the things that you're supposed to have on your legs is like um, a compression machine. It basically compresses your the bottom half of your legs, like your calf, and it forces the blood to return back up to your heart. When you have surgery, your circulation slows down a bit. And when it slows down, you can get blood clots in your legs. The blood clot can travel to your lungs um, or your brain, and we don't want that. So. I did have to tell them that it wasn't on, <laughs> but I feel like the only reason I knew that it was supposed to be on is because I'm a nurse. So just make sure that after your surgery that they have those compression machines on your legs because it's very important to have that post-operative, okay? So after my surgery, I found out that my hemoglobin dropped down to an eight. It's supposed to be between 12 and 16 and went down to an eight. That's why they gave me the iron infusion. And then it dropped down some more to 6.2, I believe. Yeah. That's half the amount that I'm supposed to have. <laughs> um, so I did end up getting a blood transfusion. I only needed one bag. Um, and each bag is, I believe, $100. So that money that I saved, not going to the recovery house, which is $85 a night, I ended up spending on the blood and then I had to spend the night again in the clinic. That's another hundred dollars. So that was two hundred dollars. But they do get that money from you up front just in case this happens. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't wanna waste what's left.
The storms we chase are leading us, and love is all we'll ever trust. Yeah, no, I don't wanna waste what's left. So yeah, I had to spend another night in the clinic just so that my blood levels would increase and then I will be released. So I will go ahead and post shortly. I'm not I'm not gonna be gone another three months. I will have some follow-up videos about my post-op days. I'm currently, um, again, like I said, I'm three months out. So look out for those videos shortly. Let me know if you all have any questions and look out for those videos. Bye.